right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here in Zoom land <laughs> and uh, in YouTube land if you're practicing with us after the fact. Thanks for thanks for being here. <clears throat> My name's Jill, and I'm one of the teachers with True North Insight. And I'm recently back. Uh, last week was my first one back here and uh, back from a, a month-long trip in Thailand and Bhutan. And uh, the main point of the trip was going to Bhutan. And then we're just like, we're flying to the other side of the world. We need to like stretch that out a bit. So we um, added on some time in, in Thailand. Um because we flew from there. So the main intention of this felt like a pilgrimage to to myself and to others. I went with my teachers, uh, Norman Feldman and Molly Swan, and and a group of fellow teachers and practitioners. And uh, most there were 12 of us and most of us were meditators um yeah and so you have to have permission you have to have a visa to go into bhutan you have to have a tour guide to go into bhutan you can't just go in on your own and biff around uh you, and um and so the tour company breathe bhutan which is highly recommended um knew that we were meditators and and so they kind of design the your time there your tour if you will um for different groups and what people are looking for uh and so they put in you know we had meditations every day in <coughs> different temples and monasteries and this kind of thing and visited yeah lots of yeah. sacred places um one of the other things about bhutan there's much <laughs> but you also uh pay i should have looked it up before what what they actually call it but it's like a environmental like a, a, a daily fee for every day you're in the country, you pay an additional environmental tax kind of um, to counteract the cost of, or the environmental impact of you being there. And it's one of, is it the only? I think it's the only, but that must be wrong. One of few, for sure, uh, carbon negative countries in the world. So it's not just carbon neutral, but carbon negative. Environmentally, they they mm, have put in so many counterbalances in place that they're producing less carbon than. Uh, they're offsetting, and maybe it's the right way to say it. The words are not, not fluid right now, but they're carbon neutral, negative actually. Yeah, so that was pretty special. Um, we ha One of the things we did that I'm gonna share about tonight is uh, we ha uh, were guests, they, they don't call us, tourists they call us guests to the country and w we were invited to visit a school because we um compiled some resources to buy this school to, for this school to be able to buy um an incinerator for the menstrual pads for the girls because they don't have the resources to dispose of them in a secure way and so the dogs that are wild everywhere, lots of dogs, um, 
would get at them and spread them around the school grounds, very unsanitary and embarrassing for the girls, etc. So <clears throat> we bought this incinerator for them to be able to burn them and and not have that problem. Thus, we were invited uh, to visit the school and, you know, they wanted to do a, a thank you presentation, etc. We could tell when we got there that the, they had put a fair bit of time into like putting together some sort of a slideshow video show presentation and then the power went out there's like which is a pretty normal occurrence there's no power and you could see them scrambling around they really you could tell that they really wanted to run this show they would put together i felt badly for them that they didn't get to do that for us the way they wanted <clears throat> But they they served us beautiful tea and and cookies and and talked with us and gave a little presentation. Then we went around and visited a few of the classrooms and got to talk to the kids and and they they sang their national anthem for us in one classroom and then they wanted us to sing and oh they sang so beautifully. Oh, it was so beautiful. They're just so, so beautiful. And they sang like they they all stood and they sang with so much uh, passion and commitment. And then they asked us to sing our anthem. And we were all like, Ooh, do we know the new words? You know, like we just like a lot of, there were a few of us that held us down and got us through that. But you could really, I felt like, oh dear. We don't have that same national pride that these little kids have. It was pretty cute. And so I wanted to share some of the Dharma just from this little school visit. Um, I'll, I'll screen share. Thank you, Matthew. Yes. Uh, a little image here. This is, let's see if that works. Is that visible for you? Could should I enlarge it a bit more? How's it looking for folks here in Zoom room? Think it's okay. Um, so this is a uh, just before you go into the school grounds. You can see here there's some tabs. It's just made of cement. This this thing, um, this water dispenser, to fill your water bottles, and it says for every drop of water you waste. You must know that somewhere on earth, someone is desperately looking for a drop of water. I found that so touching that it's not just a water refill station, which like we have everywhere now, you know, water bottle refill stations everywhere, but that it was actually a compassionate reflection on as you're, you know, to be mindful of our water use and this interconnectedness of as we're using water resources, be aware. Definitely, there's many, many beings around the world that are looking for a drop of water. And, um, it's such a simple thing that could have easily just not been there, could have just been a water refill station, but they put so much intention and 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 the intention of Dharma, the intention of understanding interconnectedness, anatta, not self, not that we're not a separate, independent, permanent self that isn't interrelated with all beings. And and these resources and elements that we that we use are also interrelated. <clears throat> and uh, so this is that was before we even got onto the school grounds. And then the school is like this this open courtyard pretty bare um, from what we could see, except for with dogs playing around. <laughs> and, um, but the dogs just live 
independently. They're not, the kids aren't really playing with the dogs or petting the dogs. In fact, one of our group tried to pet a dog and that wasn't a good idea. <clears throat> Got snapped at, but uh, because the dog was sleeping, they're just not used to people coming up and sticking their hands on them. They're used to, you know, just doing their dog thing. But it's pretty neat that there are dogs there. And so in this uh, open courtyard, on one side, there's some residences because some of the kids live there. If they can't afford to, their parents can't afford for them to go to school, then they live at the school. It's covered by the state, by the government. And a lot from tourist dollars, as we were told anyways, supports these things. Um, so there's some residences where even like little, little, little deers are living there. And, uh, and then around the other side is like, I think it was just two stories high. I was two stories high mm, with the classrooms. <clears throat> and so the next thing I'm going to show you is what was in the courtyard, in that open courtyard. So I'll just screen share again. This is it. Um, this is a, it's a, a big... Uh, outdoor painted on the, the cement wall, the school mission. And uh, somebody's been art, arty with their, their highlighting here. Um, and this school mission, like, you know, the first two are kind of seem, yeah, you would see that in most schools, especially the Excel in all we do is kind of a normal school motto or mission and to love learning. Uh, but then the second two, to me, seem pretty unique and maybe um, more prevalent in a Buddhist country and Buddhist schools as these were. To achieve goals together. And to me, I don't know if that would be such a common sentiment in a public school here in Canada. Um, maybe more, maybe achieve goals would be, but to achieve goals together is again this sense of interconnectedness and uh, cooperation that, yeah, stood out to me as feeling a little bit different. And then, and their last one here to do what is right, and this, this isn't again maybe something we wouldn't see so um so much of to do what is right and this is pointing to buddhist values and ethics sila the morality that's the foundation of the practice we talk about it lots here um you know about our as lay people our values and heart intentions and our actions that these values that fuel our actions and our speech to these under we undertake these trainings to not cause harm to not take what isn't freely given to us to not cause harm with our sensuality and sexuality to not cause harm with our speech and falsehood and harsh speech and to um be aware of intoxicants that can cause heedlessness or a lack of mindfulness these are our lay ethics and principles. Um, the, the next thing I wanted to show you is just across that courtyard and it's two big signs and I've compiled them into one image um, <clears throat> just so they fit together on the screen. But these are 10 core life skills and they're they're on big wooden boards and painted in big letters right there in the center of the courtyard and uh, so I'll show you these <clears throat> 10 core life skills and so a lot of these are kind of 
what we would be used to seeing in a school signed somewhere, problem solving and critical thinking, um, creative thinking, we might see that, eh, maybe not. Effective communication, we probably would see in decision making maybe, but some of these stand out to me as being unique, perhaps particularly to this type of culture and school. So it's a it's a um, a Buddhist country. That's the the state religion. There are some other religions, but that's it's just saturates everything. It's it's uh, I can't even describe how much um, <clears throat> it's in everything, and so things like self awareness. That's that's unique, I think. That's something like most adults I know are working on. <laughs> Self-awareness, I certainly am. It's a big concept and it's a big practice. And to have this as named for all these little beings as a core life skill to have self-awareness is, I think, profound. And then coping with emotion. That's so beautiful. Cope, and they also have coping with stress on the other side. Coping with emotion and coping with stress. I don't really have words to add to these statements because I just am so touched by this. It just um, seems to me, you know, they, and they also have empathy and interpersonal relationships. Like, I don't know. I I'll have to go visit some schools around here. But when I was in school moons ago, <laughs> so many moons ago, that doesn't stand out to me as things that were like prioritized or taught or made important, like to be empathetic and to learn how to feel and cope with my emotions and stress and and empathy. I don't know. It, it's, it's not something that stands out in my experience as, as being the core life skills. The main thing that I wanted to share about this school visit though, which is so touching, every morning, every morning, they share with the kids in an age appropriate way What's happening in the world? World news. What natural disasters or, you know, tragedies have happened? Like, give you know, they're in their different age groups and they give the appropriate amount of information to share some world news with them. Some, yeah, again, it, this, this whole theme of interconnectedness and compassion and then all the grades from the littlest little, this is like a junior school, not the high school. They all chant, they all chant compassion chant for the world every morning before they start school. Ugh. You know, the, uh, that's big. That's so profound. Can you imagine if that was like a global phenomenon, if every kid in every school around the world was reflecting on and hearing about and feeling what's happening in the world at an age-appropriate level, and then chanting <laughs> compassion uh, so they're not just in their own little world with their own little bubble but that sense of care and compassion and that that um 
as we as we know compassion karuna is more than it's not just a thoughts it's intention that creates thoughts and thoughts that create actions it's how we respond in the world and how we connect and how we speak and um our worldview really and uh they did sing for us but we didn't get to hear that chant but the 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 predominant chant all through the country that's written everywhere it's on everything is om mani padme hum and this is a these are sanskrit words om mani padme hum and it's the chant of avalokiteshvara who is a bodhisattva of compassion this is a figure i don't know it's probably too let's see if i do that Avalokiteshvara in this in this version there's different figures but uh, sitting on a lotus um, this one has four arms sometimes figures and uh, statues of and art depictions of Avalokiteshvara is a bodhisattva of compassion um, sometimes they have the thousand arms or are depicted that way this one has four and is uh, holding in the two the two arms that are back here. One of them is holding a mala beads for chanting. You would chant um, as you click a bead on the string of malas. And then the other hand is holding a lotus. The lotus is a symbol of our potential for awakening as lotus grows from the mud and grows towards the light and um, is a is a common symbol and then the two inner hands that are placed at the heart are holding a jewel between the palms and om mani padme om means there's kind of different translations but some a common one is the jewel in the lotus heart <clears throat> Padme means lotus, mani is jewel, and hum, om mani padme hum, hum represents the union of wisdom and compassion, which in this dharma is, con is uh, referred to as the two wings of our practice, compassion and wisdom, and how we need to have both of these to be balanced, to um proceed to uh, continue um because wisdom without compassion it can, is can just be very heady and kind of cold and removed and talking head kind of wisdom um and compassion without wisdom without the wisdom of interconnectedness without the wisdom of seeing you know, understanding impermanence all, all the wisdom uh if it's just compassion it can become a uh, compassion fatigue it can become a uh, pity or overwhelm it, it can become imbalanced so wisdom and compassion together um <clears throat> imagine if every workplace if every every school everywhere every home began their day you know with opening our heart awareness to the world and opening the heart awareness in compassion, cultivating compassion. Maybe it would be a different world. Ah, oh, yeah. 
So, of course, inspired by these little ones and their their dear dear hearts. Little, little beings, like they're so little. And they're they're doing this practice for us. <laughs> and some of them can't even live at home. Their parents don't have the resources for them to be able to go to school from where they live and they're like they're so little and so sweet and they're living there and chanting compassion for us it just kind of blows my mind in a good way <laughs> so let us be inspired by these ones and um, do the same <laughs> So let's get ready for practice. Of course, we'll do a compassion practice tonight. <clears throat> Just seeing your space, as as you may know, this is a Brahma Vihara practice. It's the cultivation of the abode of the heart, and it's uh, considered important that we start with kindness to this heart, body, mind. So if you need any other support, adjusting your lighting, uh, you might want to lay down, you might place a hand at the heart or at the belly, and just start with some real kindness and care for yourself at, at uh, this time. You might see if you need any other movement or stretch or adjustments before the body really feels ready for some stillness. And let the eyes find a resting place, whether it's downward or the eyes might rest on a <clears throat> beautiful piece of art or a sculpture of Avalokiteshvara or Buddha, if you have, or some other figure that uh, awakens compassion in you. <clears throat> The eyes might rest closed if that feels calming and supportive for you. <laughs> Just taking care with this our body mind that's here now meeting and opening to any any tension or discomfort or numbness that's here and just giving a bit of spacious kind attention with that you might notice the muscles of the face the neck and shoulders. Checking in with the areas of the heart center and the belly center. Seeing if there's any softness or attention that's needed here. Feeling the body's connection and relationship with and the support of the ground. 
under the back body or the lower body. And if you want, you could adopt or try on this mudra or symbolic energetic hand gesture that Avalokiteshvara is holding that with a little bit of space, that jewel between the palms in front of the heart. Or you could just feel a sense of a jewel resting inside the center of the chest heart center. And I'll just chant a few rounds of this mantra. If you know it, uh, you're muted, so feel free to join in if you like. <clears throat> Om Mane Padme Hum Om Within this heart center, what is uh, symbolized as a thousand petaled lotus, and in the center of that lotus is the jewel. And these, this lotus image, the petals continue to unfold and unfold and unfold and open. So as we practice this meditation tonight, if it lands for you or feels helpful for you, you could feel that sensation supported by the image of this lotus in the heart center, the chitta, that has a boundless quality of opening and opening in interconnected awareness and in natural compassion. And so we begin this practice here tonight with ourselves, touching into the truth that this heart, body, mind experiences suffering, experiences loss and grief and fear. This body experiences pain. And you can just organically allow a felt experience of care for your own experience of difficulty, stress.
It might arise as kind phrases for yourself. You want to be kind and gentle with this difficulty. May I be patient with this stress or difficulty, whatever it is. May I be gentle with myself as I do the best that I can. And then like that thousand petaled lotus, with this jewel of compassion in its center, we might feel some more of these lotus bud opening, some of these petals opening out as we extend our awareness in all directions. You might Begin this with an awareness of who is nearby you, perhaps in your home or in your community, in the building near you, in your family. Understanding that these beings also experience stress and fear, worry, loss. May this difficulty pass. May you feel supported through this challenging time. You might feel the body soften or relax or widen as you open these petals of awareness in front, side to side and behind, above and below. And like ripples in a pond, we can just allow this to naturally continue expanding, <clears throat> perhaps to your wider community or neighborhood. Thank mm -hmm.
your workplace if you have that or places where you volunteer or interact with your community. And just in a non-specific, just a kind of radiant compassion practice, just extending into an awareness that moves in all directions, just a little bit wider than your immediate home or immediate circle. And realizing that all these beings in that area and in that space, all interconnected, all experience stress, loss, fear, grief, etc. At times, and to different degrees, And you might just feel that as an embodied, open-hearted, radiant wish for the ease of their suffering. Or you could use phrases or words if that helps you generate that felt experience. Or you could just repeat that mantra if you find that helpful. Om Mani Padme Hum. There's people all around the world chanting that very chant right at this moment. And so we can let these ripples just take their natural form to widen a little bit further across some boundaries and borders, lines in the sand, extending beyond your immediate community. Awareness in front, side to side, behind. The petals of the lotus continue unfolding and unfolding in their natural course into boundless compassion. Beyond mountains, cross waters, beyond borders, Just trust the sensation of the heart without the head getting into it. And rest in this cultivation of the felt experience. <clears throat> or you could use words or mantra to help you connect with that felt experience. May your suffering be eased. May you be loved and supported through this difficulty.
dropping out of the conceptual mind and just dropping into this heart lotus that continues unfolding, 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 opening to all beings everywhere. <clears throat> not picking and choosing who is worthy of compassion. Radiant metta, front, side to side, back, and all of the four directions in between those. as these dear children practice every day. Awareness of those who are suffering violence, homelessness, environmental catastrophes, lack of shelter and nutrition, violence. Without the heart collapsing, but just letting the boundless natural compassion flow through this heart body mind not us doing it just being part of these petals opening all beings everywhere may all beings everywhere be safe be loved Be free from suffering. I wish I could share a picture of these these sweet kids, but um, that would 
would be appropriate because I didn't have the permission, but uh, <clears throat> you might just picture some little ones. They're just so, so young, so little sweethearts. I just was so touched that they're beginning every day offering compassion to the world. Is, it just kind of blew me away. Uh, so I hope there's something there that's inspiring or touching for you and <clears throat> uh, next week I hope to share some other uh, reflections from the experience in Bhutan and uh, we'll see who knows what's going to happen <laughs> and uh, I'll put a link down below to um, that chant and um, also a link to the upcoming New Year's retreat. If you're interested, check that link below in person uh, New Year's retreat. Thanks for practicing with us.